Well, why don't we switch uh, and move uh, more into the realm of uh, ridership operations and budget. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of uh, discussion nationally lately about um, uh, transit usage being at something of an all-time high, at least I think um, in gross numbers, highest level since 1956 or something like that. Uh, and some people have remarked that, well, TriMet is still not back to the pre-2009 peak. Um, uh, what's your thought about the comparison between how we're doing here versus nationally? Well, I'd say that we've had some particular challenges over the last five years. Um, and we've stepped up to those, and I think one of them will talk about the fiscal year 15 budget that I've proposed to the board, but I think it's very good news uh, for our riders. Um, and some of the investments we've been making this year I think are good news for the riders. Um, one of the particular challenges as you look at the Portland numbers is that we eliminated free rail zone. And going from free to requiring a fare is a big jump in fare and did indeed uh, reduce ridership by uh, a pretty uh, noticeable chunk, a couple million a year when you start adding it all up. So um, I think that's the biggest problem that we found. We actually are beginning to see some really positive trends in ridership particularly peak hour ridership uh, continues to grow um, and matter of fact some of the investments perhaps we'll talk about in the uh, fiscal year 15 budget are really targeted at, at overcrowding and schedule reliability in the peak hour which is one of our growing problems. Um, so um, I, I think there is that difference in, in, in w first of all we, we did have some we did reduce free rail zone we did increase the fares we did reduce some service those all have effects. Um, but they've been pretty modest when you look at them overall. Um, and I think the really good news is that as you look at our service improvements starting last September, again, March 1st of this year, we added back frequent service intervals to all of our lines at our frequent service lines um, during the uh, midday. By the time you get to the end of fiscal year 15, we'll be up at pre-recession service levels again. Now, some people say, Matt, that took a long time, and I would be the first one to say it took a long time, but it feels very good to be back there, frankly. So I think we've had to deal with some, some particular problems and some particular challenges which have affected our number, but I think overall we're seeing uh, very, very hopeful trends, and I think, I know, people will respond to the service increases that we have programmed. Okay. Uh, so let's transition that into the budget discussion. Um, you know, I think there's something of a dichotomy in what our readers are hearing. Yeah, the state just completed their audit of TriMet, and I think it, it really underscored the unfunded liabilities. Yes. Uh, there's obviously the good news that, that you know, you've just shared, uh, restoring frequent service lines and a trend line to continue doing that. Um, I think a lot of people can't square those in their mind. How are we funding restorations of service when we still have these unfunded liabilities looming on the horizon? Can you connect those dots for our readers? Uh, well, the first thing I'd say is um, the TriMet budget is not a sound bite. Um, so there's a lot of moving pieces to it. So let me try to go through some of those if, if I can. The first thing that I'd say is that um, we have been on an increase on the payroll tax for over the ten, last 10 years. And the last one of those increases actually went into effect January 1st of this year. And all of the service that we've been adding up to now have really been, folk, really been funded out of that particular increase. The second thing I'd add so is that... Before you go to your second point, just following up on that, um, how much of that is also the economic recovery and the fact that... Well, that's where I was going to go. Okay. Exactly. And that's exactly where it was going to go, is that um, the second factor is that the payroll tax actually has been responding to the growing economy that we've got here in the region. And, um, it, you know, it was slow to come out of this recession. We stayed down at the bottom. We skated along the bottom there for quite a while, but now it's beginning to come up. It's not... Uh, what I would call gangbusters growth, but it's very solid growth. Um, and so we're beginning to see uh, a response in terms of the payroll tax, and that's very, very helpful to us. The particular detail that helps us with service is that a lot of that um, payroll tax growth is what we call real growth. It's not due to inflation, because mm -hmm. inflation remains pretty low. And so that's a very good thing. The third element that I think allows a little room in the budget is that we have made some progress on our cost structure. Mm -hmm. You right, recall that we did uh, secure an arbitration uh, contract change um, about a year and a half ago now um, that really moved our 
employees into a, I think, a still pretty generous 90-10 healthcare plan. Um, and as we look at that, um, it has actually made a difference. Now, for the first time, our employees have a sort of stake in the healthcare game, and they're being more careful with their healthcare expenditures. Uh, I think, to a large extent, because of of that um, that that coinsurance that they're experiencing for the first time. So those things added together have given us a little little room in the budget. Um, now, sustaining that over a period of time is still going to be the big challenge and dealing with that un those unfunded liabilities over a long term remain a challenge but we can we can do those t two things together we can you know we we can chew gum and walk at the same time but we have to be really cautious about it and we have to make sure that we're uh, being very very diligent to that end our board has adopted some some policy some financial policies called strategic financial plan um, and they are guidelines for us in terms of making sure that we um, both continue uh, to reduce the unfunded dot liabilities um, and, um, and make sure that uh, the growth in both uh, payroll tax and fares that are associated with growth can get, be reinvested in the community and the service the community needs and wants. So how much of the longer term picture depends on continuing to get concessions from the union on the labor contract? Um, it, it's entirely dependent on, on that, I would say. Um, we would project that by about fiscal year 17, maybe 18, the lines start to cross again and would be in a position unless we achieve uh, the kinds of, I think, very modest concessions we're asking of our um, ATU members right now. Okay. Uh, a few years ago, you put a major organizational focus on safety uh, after a tragic incident and a, a big safety review after that. Um, this year you've made some restructurings to address reliability. Um, and there, prior to that there have been a series of not such great performing days for Max. Mm -hmm. um, so how are those efforts panning out and are, what results are you seeing from both of those? Um, so uh, let me start with the safety. Uh, as, I, as I've again indicated, um, we start a whole process of really making safety what we call the core value of everyone at, at TriMet. Uh, we, if we ask our writers what do they want from us, they may not even say safety, but we know the first thing they want is a safe ride. Then we talk about reliability and frequency and, and price. But safe comes is at clearly the top of the pyramid for everybody. So we have, I, I think, reconstituted and strengthened our safety department. We are involving um, a, a number of what we call continuous improvement teams throughout the organization on topics like safety. We've reinvigorated our safety committees. Um, we have um, are, are beginning to implement what we call the safety management system overall. Uh, and I've recently installed a uh, tracking system where we can actually do a better job of keeping track of the incidents, whether they be workers' comp incidents or other in incidents, to really be able to go back and do the analysis necessary to correct uh, conditions that might lead to that. Um, so it's always a work in progress, though. So what I would tell you is that we, um, um, we, we have a regular uh, review on safety issues and for example in the last budget we did a number of, for example, um, pedestrian crossings along uh, the blue line particularly on the east side but also throughout the system where we try to create more of the Z crossing kinds of connections and where we're upgrading um, uh, pedestrian crossings in other areas. Um, the other thing we do is that we, and um, is really begin to focus on the changes that are occurring around, for example, our max line. Um, and one thing we're doing is when there's a lot of growth in an area, we've got to respond with um, enhanced pedestrian channelization and improvements. And so, for example, in this next budget, we're actually doing that and programming that for the 7th Street, 7th and Holiday Station, where we have um, you know, seven to 800 apartments unit ap mm -hmm. appearing on one side of the street that haven't been there for a long time. The Convention Center Hotel um, will be another site, and the Arenco development area in Hillsboro is another site where we're, we're working on that. Um, so maybe, uh, tell me if that answered your question about safety. Continues to be, 
I can tell you a few other things that are going on. For example, we're uh, managing an FTA grant program where we're looking actually at the, this has been called the talking bus, but the, mm -hmm. the warning signals. A second try at that technology. A second try. And actually, it's a, it's, there are four different technologies being <laughs> tested, and we'll, we'll, we'll go through that. So we're always looking at that. Um, so there's a number of other initiatives that are underway to try uh, to make sure that we're always being as the best we can related to safety. And do you have metrics to show what progress you're making? We do have metrics. Um, I don't have them off the top of my head. I would tell you that it's one of the things that's hard about safety is you don't want to rely entirely on lagging indicators, like the number of crashes. And so then trying to get ahead of the curve and find out what your leading indicators are is a little challenging. And that's one of the things we're working on. Uh, one of the reader questions we had is um, observed change in behavior along I-84 where the trains coming into the station used to ring a bell, now they're sounding a horn. Is mm -hmm. that a deliberate safety uh, action? Well, it, it's an example of that we're always alive on looking for new and better ways to make sure that we're safe. Mm -hmm. Um, in some cases, frankly, we found that the bell actually works just as well as the horn, so we've discontinued the horn as in, in some of those situations. But, you know, these, these are the kind of things we want to keep, keep trying. Does it make a difference and does it improve things? And, and then uh, try it and, and test, measure the results. Okay. And your second, second part was reliability. Reliability, thank you. Um, so you're, you're absolutely right. I have been focused. Um, on the reliability of the rail system. Uh, knock on wood, lately it's been quite good, but uh, we, we've had some, some bad incidents and we don't want that to repeat. So a couple of things I'd tell you is, one is that we are putting an increased emphasis on the, maintenance, the proper maintenance and, and preventive maintenance activities uh, that are done performed by TriMet sources. And to that end, we've actually asked an independent engineer, a firm you know, LTK Services, to do bring in some outside experts to look at all of our maintenance practices and su suggest any improvements or changes that they think are necessary. The second thing I'd mention is that this, for the second year in a row in this fiscal year 15 budget, we've programmed about 15, or excuse me, $53 million in uh, both maintenance and uh, rehabilitation pro projects, primarily focused on the blue line uh, east of the Willamette River. And that includes, for example, tr changing out some of the track sections and switches that are now, frankly, approaching 30 years old and beginning to show very severe signs of wear, as well as the progressive rehabilitation of our light rail vehicles to make sure that they stay in top-notch shape. Um, and uh, what I would tell you is I'm concerned about it, and that's why we've stepped up the efforts and put uh, both increased organizational focus on, uh, on the, these efforts, as well as backing it up with resources. Um, too soon to know the results of that, but um, hopefully it, our customers will see improved and continuing reliability uh, moving into the future. Right now, I think we're in a low 80% in terms of on time. I'd like to see that up 85, 90% for max.